So I woke up today and I chose violets. No, I'm just kidding. I definitely didn't. This is not to be like an ill-intended video, but honestly, I was just thinking about the fact that I feel like on YouTube a lot, especially here in the luxury community, we often hear people kind of saying the same things over and over again, like Chanel quality issues, you know, how to get a Birkin. And I was thinking like, there are probably a lot of thoughts that we all have, but aren't necessarily as popular or as mainstream. And so I wanted to share my unpopular luxury opinions with you all. Now, let me just caveat this by saying these are just my opinions. These are just my thoughts. If any of these apply to something that you feel totally different about, that's actually a good thing. It is good that we like different things in this world because like, how boring would it be if everyone liked the exact same thing, the exact same look, same bag, same shoes? Like, that'd be no fun for anyone. So it's probably a good thing that like we have a little bit of like discord and respectful disagreement. So without further ado, let's get into number one. And the first one is really interesting because it's probably both a popular opinion and an unpopular opinion at the same time. And I think you'll know what I mean when I say it. The first one is that I think the Gucci Marmont logo is still really freaking cute. Now, back when the Gucci Marmont logo originally came out, we all know it took the luxury handbag community and just like luxury community in general by storm. You could not swipe like more than one or two swipes on your Instagram feed without seeing an influencer with that bag. No joke, I actually even ordered the Gucci Marmont bag in the super mini size, but I was on the wait list for a really long time. Now, during the time that I was on the wait list, I actually was laid off from my job. So being the financially kind of responsible person that I am, I decided to cancel the bag order. And once I got a new job, I kind of decided I didn't want the bag anymore because it had become so mainstream. And so, I think that this is a popular slash unpopular opinion because I think a lot of people like the Gucci Marmont logo, obviously as evidenced by its popularity. Now I will say, I think another reason that this bag became so popular was because of the fact that in the luxury world, at the time that it came out, it was at a more affordable, more accessible entry level price point. You know, it wasn't $5,000. So I think between like the style of it being really cute and also the price point is what made this so popular. But as we know, you know, the Gucci Marmont logo in general, especially in the handbags, really flooded the market. And so a lot of people kind of got tired of it. A lot of folks have, you know, started selling on their bags. You know, if you go into Gucci, there is no way you can definitely get a Gucci Marmont bag. Like there's no type of special waiting list. And that's because they've got a lot of inventory on it. So. A lot of people are now saying, especially in the luxury community, that that bag is old, that it's outdated, and that the Gucci Marmont logo in general is just kind of like, ugh, played out. And I disagree with that. I actually really like the logo itself. For those of you that have seen my luxury handbag collection video, you know that I actually have a camera bag with a really small Gucci Marmont logo with the two little GGs, because I do think it's really cute. And you know, I wish it hadn't saturated the market so much because if so, I would probably own more pieces with it. But regardless of its popularity, just like me as a person, like objectively looking at the Gucci Marmont logo itself, I still think it's really cute. <laughs> now, next up on the list is one that I think might ruffle a few feathers. <sighs> and it's the fact that I do not think Hermes Rodeo bag charms go very well with Birkins and Kellys. Now hear me out on this one before y'all like come for me. I think, and I think a lot of people think that Hermes bags, generally speaking, are very elegant. They are very refined. They're very mature, sophisticated, chic bags. Now, honestly, they're so mature that a lot of people also call them grandma bags. And I've said on my channel before, if they are grandma bags, call me a grandma because I love them. But I think that overall, the handbags by Hermes, they are just gorgeous. They are stunning, they're sophisticated, you know, everything that I just mentioned. And I feel like Rodeo's, are they're definitely a lot more 
playful, a lot more whimsical. Like they're fun, they're nostalgic. But I do also think that they're maybe like a little bit clunky. And so I just don't think they go very well with the look of an Hermes Birkin or Kelly. I think they're just like two very different vibes and I don't think they really go well together. But I will say like, I do think that there is definitely a time and a place for rodeos and other fun types of bag charms. So for instance, I think that rodeos look really great on Pico tins. I also think they look really good on Lindy bags too, because those are more like fun, playful, you know, a little bit more youthful types of bags in my opinion. And so I feel like they go better with those types of bags. I feel like when you put them on a Birkin or a Kelly, it's just kind of like ruining the overall vibe of the bag. So please don't kill me for saying that one. I knew this is gonna be a contentious one. So sorry, but just not crazy about them on Birkins and Kellys. Next up is an opinion about a bag that truly has had me baffled ever since it came out. And I think that this bag is so overhyped. It's the Loewe Puzzle Bag. I cannot for the life of me comprehend why this bag is so popular. I think it looks really strange. To me, it is not aesthetically pleasing. It does not complement an outfit. I don't like it in neutral colors. I don't like it in pops of colors. I just, I don't understand why it's so popular. I totally understand that the Loewe has beautiful quality bags. Like they have really gorgeous leathers and they have really good craftsmanship. So like overall they're well-made bags, but in terms of just like what they look like, I feel like Loewe puzzle bags look really awkward. And to me, like in general, they just seem way overhyped. And I feel like oftentimes like on YouTube, when I watch luxury handbag collection videos, a lot of times like people go through their collection and then like at the end, they show this Loewe puzzle bag and they talk about how they're obsessed with it. And I just, I don't, I don't get it. Like cannot compute, do not understand why this bag is so popular and so widespread. I think Leve has a lot of really gorgeous other bags, a lot of more beautiful bags that people should consider over the puzzle bag. So that's just one that I really don't get. This next one is an opinion about an item that I feel like you really don't see a lot of on YouTube, especially in the luxury community. And that is the fact that I think the Goyard St. Louis tote bag looks inexpensive. I mean, Goyard is this very like high class, very chic, very like exclusive elitist brand. I will say Goyard is the one store that I do not enjoy going into in terms of like luxury brands. Like I have no problem rolling up into Chanel in my workout clothes, as you all have seen. I'll link a video where I do it. I have no problem going into Hermes, like looking very casual, very understated. But Goyard, like they're so exclusive and just like the air that they had in there feels very like snobby to me, which I, I, I don't enjoy as a person. Like, yes, you can be high class. Yes, you can be sophisticated, but you can still be inclusive and welcoming. I mean, like Dior has the best in-store experience. The sales associates are amazing. And I feel like Goyard needs to like get off their high little horses and like take a page out of Dior's book. But regardless, I think that the St. Louis tote bag, like their most popular bag, very similar to that of like the Louis Vuitton Neverfull, looks kind of cheap. I went and tried it on myself because I do love the print. And I, in theory, thought I really wanted one of their tote bags in either like the gray print or blue or green, because I don't know how much I love green, or even like the white combination. But I had also, like I also had some concerns and some reservations before I went to try the bag on, because from what I like had seen it on influencers, like when I'd seen it on social media, the bag looked very shiny it is a coated canvas very similar to louis vuitton's like coated canvas monogram you know print um goyard just has like their own version of it but for some reason theirs is like super shiny and it also appears very thin so when you use that type of material in a tote bag where it doesn't have much structure i think the whole bag just looks really flimsy and it almost looks like pleather or like plastic because of the coating on it so I really just don't like the St. Louis tote bag, but I do still like the Goyard print and I do love their leather bags. And I think they have a lot of 
really nicely crafted bags, some ones with a lot of structure, a lot of design, and those are amazing. And those are made out of like their real leather. So I think those look really nice, but their most popular one, the St. Louis tote bag to me looks quite down market, very inexpensive and just like overall a pretty cheap bag. I wouldn't spend the money on it. I feel like this next opinion is probably gonna hurt some of you folks because I know that a lot of you all own some version of this pair of shoes. But if I'm being really honest, I think that Chanel espadrilles, espadrilles, espadrilles are not flattering. I actually don't think espadrilles are flattering in general, but that doesn't matter because, you know, like I myself have worn espadrilles forever. I even went and tried on the Chanel ones. Like I tried on the leather ones to see if they felt a little bit more, you know, chic and like kind of molded to my foot a little bit better. But honestly, like they just make your feet look kind of clunky, regardless of the color, regardless of the material. I know a lot of people like stand Chanel espadrilles like years ago. Again, you could not scroll through your Instagram feeds without seeing them on the feet of every single influencer. And so they're staples that a lot of people still have in their closet, but I just think they're very overpriced for a shoe that is not flattering on the foot. Like I am not really into like the look of feet general. And so like, I want my shoes to make my feet look better. Like I want them to make them look like very cute, you know, very like well-kept and like dainty. And I just feel like the Chanel espadrilles for as expensive as they are, they're, they kind of almost have the effect of like a dad sandal. Like they just make your feet look like bigger and heavier and wider than they are. And so why would you want to spend like almost a thousand dollars doing that to your foot? I don't know. So I just, overall, I do not think that Chanel espadrilles are very flattering on the feet. And on the note of feet and shoes in general, this next one I think will be a shocker because it is about a pair of shoes that you often hear on YouTube are very uncomfortable. And I'm here to say that I think they are incredibly comfortable. And that is the Oran sandal from Hermes. Now, obviously the Oran sandals are Hermes's most popular, iconic shoe. Like they are something that most Hermes lovers tend to at least have one pair in their collection. I myself have one pair that I bought last year and I need to do a review on them for you all still. So I will try and do that in the near future. Um, I got them in box calf leather. They're in all white and I have been so surprised at how comfortable they are. But I will say it took like two to three wears for them to feel super comfortable. I would say like in terms of like on a scale of one to 10, 10 being, you know, most comfortable, one being least comfortable. The first few times I wore them, I would have given them, you know, maybe like a six, maybe a seven, like overall, like wearable, comfortable, but I could wear them maybe for like half a day. And I feel like the problem is that here on YouTube, a lot of folks get really crazy and they get an item and then they review it like the next day. And for those of you that are seasoned subscribers of this channel, for those of you that are members of the family, you will know that I try to have something, you know, for several months, hopefully at least six months before I review it, because I do not understand how you can review an item before you have actually worn it. And, you know, you have to wear something over time in order to get like a true gauge of how it works. So I do feel like a lot of the videos on YouTube that say it's uncomfortable, you'll notice like they're often times like right after someone has unboxed them, then they're doing the review. I don't think they actually really broke the shoe in and they were just like an eager beaver wanting to get their little Hermes around sandal review out. So I think that like overall folks need to give their stuff time before they really form an opinion, especially with shoes like leather shoes like need to be broken in properly before they're comfortable. But I would say after I'd worn them like three times, like out for like half a day, I would now say those sandals are definitely like an eight, eight and a half type of thing. So I find those to be extremely comfortable. Now, Oran sandals are notoriously narrow. So I would say if you know that you have a wider foot, the Oran just probably isn't for you. And it's got nothing to do with you. You know, there's nothing wrong with your foot and there's also nothing wrong with the Oran itself. It's just like, it's only available in so many widths. And so, you know, if it's just too narrow for your foot, it's probably not a good match. But I will say, if you do have a wider foot, it does look like the, and I'm gonna butcher how to say this, but like the 
the cheap or the chipe or the hype, I don't know how you say them, sandals from Hermes, those are much wider and those will fit your feet a lot better. I will say I'm very surprised that Hermes doesn't actually do wide widths in the Aron sandal, considering the fact that they are such a popular shoe. Because back when I was a shoe buyer, like wide widths, like they were it. That's where the money was. Any type of shoe that I could buy either in a wide width or if they were like tall boots, if I could buy like the extended calf boot, those were extremely popular because like, I think like we as like an overall group of people in the world and also especially us fashion lovers have really become much more inclusive, much more accepting of lots of different body shapes and sizes. And we realize that not everyone is a size two. So, I mean, if anyone from Hermes is watching this video, I would just like recommend in terms of like making yourself some money, you probably should make the Oran sandal available in wider widths. But overall, I think it's a very comfortable shoe. I do also think that the reason I think it's especially comfortable is because I got the new version where the insole is just one piece of leather, where there are some older versions where the insole actually had two pieces of leathers and they were kind of joined at a seam like underneath your foot. And so some people said that that seam was uncomfortable. So if you're going to buy or on sandals from the Hermes Boutique itself, chances are, you know, they've sold through all the old versions and you'll be getting a new version, but just double check. But if you're buying pre-loved, like just make sure, are you buying the new or the old version with, you know, two pieces of leather or one, because if you can get the new version with one, chances are it's going to be a lot more comfortable for you. And now finally, for my last unpopular opinion, I really want to hear your all's thoughts on this one because I'm not sure if this just has to do with luxury YouTubers or is this like people in general and I am just like wildly like out of it. But I think that no one human being needs that many SLGs. Like there are so many YouTubers that I love and think are incredible, inspiring business women. I love them. I watch their channels. But like they've got like 20 different card holders or like 10 different wallets. And I, for the life of me, cannot understand how one person needs that many SLGs. Now with that in mind, obviously, if we are part of like this luxury community, we are not buying these things because we need them. So like in terms of need, you need one bag, one wallet, right? Like you don't need more than that. So we're not buying these things in terms of need. But I just cannot understand how someone could have like 10, 15, 20 different wallets, card holders, you know, pouches, things like that. Because I mean, my wallet like has my cards in it. it's got my ID in it. it's got my money in it. And so like, do these people really have time to like switch out their SLGs like every single day? And like, wouldn't they be scared that they accidentally left something they need from one wallet to the other? Like, I know I would. And I have like less than five, I think, or probably like right around five. And I feel like that's actually a lot. And the only reason I have a couple is because I bought them as like a matching set with a bag, you know, or to coordinate with a bag. And, you know, I don't really need those. And I wear them sometimes, not all the time. So like, I just do not have all the energy to be switching back and forth to all these different SLGs. I honestly feel like a lot of people, like tell me what you all think. I think people like buy these items like out of novelty because they're cute, you know, they're little, they're, you know, fairly inexpensive relative to the price of a bag. But I don't think these people are actually using all of these SLGs, right? Or do people just spend like 30 minutes a day, like do, 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 put, taking things in and out of their wallets? Like I, ain't nobody got time for that, bye, like no. So <laughs> I am just curious, are these YouTubers actually using all of their SLGs or not? Because I would venture to say they probably use like their main like two to four and the rest are just like sitting in a drawer somewhere unused for majority of the time. So those are my unpopular opinions. I genuinely hope I did not offend you all with them. Again, these are just my points of view. These are just my thoughts, but I am curious to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Do you agree with any of these? Definitely drop that in the comments below. And if you disagree, definitely drop those in the comments below too, but like respectfully, right? We love a little bit of like respectable, like back and forth. So overall, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I would love it if you could just like this video. Just give a little thumbs up down in the corner below. And if you haven't already, what are you doing? you need to subscribe to my channel. So that way you can get 
all the latest content about all things shopping delivered straight to you. Thanks again for watching. My name is Lily and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye everyone.